and I want to just actually share just quickly 10 things that I found out in my own personal life and you probably will agree about overcoming spiritual drought number one is how you respond in the spiritual drought determines how long that drought is gonna last Israel went through the wilderness it was supposed to be a 14 day trip unfortunately it lasted 40 days 40 years I'm sorry Jesus goes through wilderness and it lasted only 40 days and one of the reasons is that you know you can't escape spiritual drought it's gonna come one way or the other you can't pray it out you can't fast it out and the question is not whether it comes the question is how are you gonna respond in that drought that response will determine how long you're gonna stay there I believe many people extend their spiritual drought by wrong responses in the spiritual drought and I want to share with you just few few of those responses this the second thing so the first one that what I do whether it will extend it or it could shrink it number two is this the Holy Spirit can bring me to the wilderness but only the Holy Scriptures can get me through the wilderness the Bible says Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit to wilderness but what got him through the wilderness? It wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Scriptures. We don't see mentions of the Holy Spirit. We don't see any spiritual encounters there. We don't see angels. We don't see God speaking. We don't see none of the supernatural that was accompanying him in the Jordan, uh, Jordan River. But we see the Holy Scriptures. He used the Holy Scriptures and because of that, he got through it. And this is what I learned. The second thing is that we rely on the Scriptures, not on our feelings. If you are in a spiritual drought and you look to how you feel and what you feel to determine whether God is with you, to determine uh, where you get headed to, or to determine what's going on with you, you will always find yourself in a very, very shady place. The best thing to do is instead of focusing on what you feel, focus on what you know. Focus on what you know. Focus on what you know. That's why Job said when he was going through the worst time in his life, he didn't say, I feel my Redeemer is with me. He said, I know my Redeemer is with me. Paul says that I know in whom I believed. Paul didn't say, I feel, I know. That means that when I'm going through the drought, I don't focus on my feelings now. I don't even focus on the presence. I focus on the scriptures. I focus on what God said. And I focus on what I know. The third thing is God's silence is not God's absence. Many times we equal God's silence to God's absence. God being silent doesn't mean God is absent. A teacher many times is silent during the test. That doesn't mean the teacher left the room. It just means that the student has encountered a test when the teacher is silent. I always remind myself, if I feel the silence of God, it doesn't mean God left me. It probably means God has put a test on my desk. And it's kind of pointless at that time to start raising your hands and, you know, ask the teacher for some answers. Because during the test, the teacher will not give you any answers. The teacher will expect you to reflect on what you've learned when the teacher was speaking. And to use what you've learned at the time and put it to practice. And when the test is over, the teacher will speak again. Some of you who may be going through the time right now where you feel like God left you, God abandoned you, God is not speaking no more. Maybe you're going through a test. God didn't leave you. God didn't abandon you. But when the test will be over, and it will be over, you will feel the sen You will feel God speaking again. You will sense God speaking again. Number four, if you're going through hell, Churchill said that, keep going. Sometimes people don't recognize this, is that you hit a dry patch, or you hit a dry season don't build an apartment there don't park your life there David says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil for you are with me David says I walk through the valley of the shadow of death David didn't build an apartment there he didn't park his life there many people allow the dry seasons in their life not to be seasons but to become places where they dwell that's why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6 he says that put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to withstand on the evil day evil day not evil days not evil months that means that the evil days means those hard day God knows they're gonna come and you need the armor of God not to overcome the evil day he didn't say put on the armor of God to overcome he says to stand to withstand that means to get through that 
the best thing you can do is just get through it. Sometimes it's that crazy day, that crazy week, that crazy season, maybe month or two. Just keep on going. Angels told Lot when he is, he uh, when they rescued him from Sodom, they said this. He said, "Run for your life. Don't look back, and do not stay in the plane. Means don't stay where it's mediocre. You're gonna hit a mediocre season, but don't stay there. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on taking step forwards." Number five. God doesn't just reward us when we find Him. God rewards us when we seek Him. Many people get discouraged when they don't feel like they find, they're find finding God in, in their prayer, in their pursuit. And you must understand, the scripture says that God, he who comes to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of those that seek Him. God doesn't just reward those who find Him. God rewards you for seeking Him. The Bible says that blessed are those who are hungry, who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. It doesn't just say blessed are those who are righteous. We know the blessing exists for the righteous. But if you're just hungry for it, the Bible says that David was a man after God's heart. You know, we always say David was man of God's heart. Not really. David made some pretty stupid mistakes. But David was after that and God blessed him. God will bless you for just seeking him. Even if you don't feel like you're finding him. Even you, you don't feel like you're breaking through. Just for pressing in. Just for reaching. If you're like Zacchaeus, you're literally pressing in and you cannot get a breakthrough. You climbed on a tree to get a better view of Jesus, but you still didn't touch Jesus. Jesus will find you because He sees your reach. He sees your pursuit. So many times God encouraged me with that. That when I was pressing in through fasting, through prayer, and I felt like I was getting nowhere. I felt like everything was stuck. And God was saying, Vlad, I don't just reward you because you get a breakthrough. I'll reward you because you were pressing in. And God will give you that breakthrough. Number six, suffering is not an excuse to stop serving. Many times what we do is we use suffering and the dry season as an excuse to stop ministering and to stop helping others. But it goes a contrary against the Bible. Because Abraham had to pray for healing when his own wife was barren. Job had to pray for his friends when his own life was in shambles. Joseph translated dreams of other people when his own dream was on hold. Jesus was saving the world when his own family thought he was crazy. Jesus was healing people when he was being handcuffed in the wilderness, in, in the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was leading people to salvation when he was hanging on the cross. That tells us you cannot allow your dry season to cause you to stop being an usher, stop being a greeter, stop volunteering in Sunday school, stop leading a home group, stop preaching and stop worshiping. I know so many people who have allowed their dry season to drive them out of the church, drive them out completely out of relationship with God because they did this. They felt like I'm going to be a hypocrite if I'm going to serve now, but I'm not feeling it. If you're going to only serve when you feel it, you might as well just stop serving completely because we're not doing that because of us. We're doing that because of God who lives in us and we're doing that out of our obedience and because it's a privilege to serve. But sometimes, honestly, you just do it because it's an obligation and that's fine as long as it's not an obligation all your life. Number seven, sometimes the best thing you can do on your worst day is take a nap. Yes, you heard me right. Take a nap. Many times when we physically are exhausted, when we are in fatigue, we're not eating right, we're not exercising, we're not sleeping right, what happens is that our emotions become very affected by that. We actually, our perception of God becomes broken. And the problem isn't always the demons. A lot of times the problem is that we are tired. That's why when Elijah was running from Jezebel, God's angel didn't give Elijah a scripture. He didn't give him a prophecy. He didn't even give him a visitation. He didn't even give him an encounter. He gave him a good meal and a nap. That's why Jesus slept in the storm. And he was the only one able to stop the storm. You need to learn to rest. Because if you are fatigued physically, it will affect your spiritual life. And you may think it's the devil coming at you. And yes, the devil is 
probably behind that. But he will use your physical fatigue to arrest you. If you're on rest from fatigue, you will get arrested by fatigue. Rest is a must. God created us at night we sleep, during the day we work. If we work so much that we sleep, that we don't sleep at all, and we, we're constantly driven by that, it will affect our emotions, and our emotions will affect our spiritual life. Number eight, and this is powerful. If you missed devotions, that does not mean you lost your devotion. Devotions is a time you spend with God. Devotion is the life given to God. Problem with us is that many times we equal devotions with devotion. That if our devotional life has taken a little struggle or if we're not reading the Bible for a day or two or maybe we're not getting through anywhere with our devotions and we now question our devotion we say, well, I guess I'm not loving God no more. I guess God doesn't love me no more. That is a lie of the devil. You know, I am married. Here's a ring. I'm currently in Pennsylvania uh, with my friends doing a camp. My wife is back at home in Pasco. I'm not physically able to see my wife. I'm not with her since Saturday morning. And now it's Wednesday night. Just because I haven't been with her physically, and we haven't spent time physically since Saturday. That doesn't mean I'm divorced. That doesn't mean I don't love my wife. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to be with my wife. But because of this, you know, camp, I'm not able to be. Actually, my relationship with her is not dependent on the dates I have with her. My relationship with her depends on the love and the commitment I've given to her. That whether I am with her physically or I am in another country, my heart is hers and she belongs to me. Now, I love the dates I have with her, but these dates are not a relationship. They are the expression of relationship. So when I don't spend time with her, I miss her. I don't feel guilty. I feel, um, I feel more feelings of affection. I sometimes, I, when I was younger, I used to guilt trip myself. If I would skip a day of prayer or, or somehow my fasting didn't finish, you know, and, and I would like say, oh my goodness, you know, now my devotions are suffering, therefore my devotion is suffering. And I would be guilty. And the Lord started to teach me. He said, Vlad, do you have a relationship with me? Or are we in some kind of a contract? If we are in a relationship and you don't spend some time in the Bible or something, something happened, you shouldn't feel guilty. You should feel hungry. And that completely set me free. Number 10. Don't make decisions when you are in your dry season. Don't make permanent decision when you are spiritually dry. When you are emotionally down and you start making relationship decisions, career decisions, uh, where to live decisions, where to minister decisions, you will always make a wrong decision. The best thing to do is to put off those decisions until you come out of that fog, until you come out of that funk, until you come out of that cloud. And only then make the decisions when your mind is alert, when your spirit is receptive, and your emotions are stable, not when you are broken and shattered. And lastly, number 10, develop stamina. One of the reasons I believe God allows dry seasons is to develop within us a fruit of patience because patience makes you complete what makes you complete is not having a girlfriend or a boyfriend what makes you complete is not having a car or big muscles or even reaching a bucket list Bible says let patience have its perfect work because that makes us complete something about patience changes our character but patience is not a gift it's a fruit fruit starts sour and it becomes sweet fruit develops fruit grows how does that fruit grows god allows us to go through seasons and times and things where we have an option to be patient or we have an option to just tap out and quit and when you go through a dry season and you don't complain you don't whine you don't throw the towel you don't start asking god where are you why did you leave me but you stand your ground you know this too will pass <coughs> you know god didn't leave you 
you know he is with you you know that everything will work out for your good and you literally you just keep on going you keep on going you keep on going and you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel and the light is not the train it's the Holy Spirit he will break through that uh, that this wilderness this temptation will end and then you will be starting your ministry you will be starting a new season in your life and you keep it something happens with your spirit your spirit stretches you become a person who's not moved by feelings and then when you reach that new season it becomes amazing because you're no longer shaken too much with the compliments or the criticism why because your stamina is developed there is something about your spirit that is developed through the things you went through a lot of people crumble when they reach their new season because they've never developed a character Saul when he reached the kingdom you know it took one bad song where they were singing against him in the favor of David and he went mental he went crazy because his character wasn't developed see David went through hell David went through dry seasons and we see that in Psalms and God developed his stamina that's why David wasn't afraid of anything he wasn't afraid when Absalom rose against him when things came against him he stood his ground there was something about him he was anchored he was solid God is far more interested than just bringing you to a new place it's to develop within you a character that once you reach that place you will be able to stay in that place and move forward out of that place God bless you guys I um, hope you have a wonderful day if this was a blessing to you please share that with your friends I know this will be a blessing to many people because this these truths have helped me um, in the last many years to get through the dry seasons that I encountered in my life. If you have other tips that you would like to share with others, please comment below. God bless you and have a wonderful day.